G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. We are going to do probably the last ranking style video I'm going to do this preseason, and today we're going to be taking a look at AFL Spine. So, just to clarify exactly what a spine is, you picture a team sheet, it's literally the middle column, so the full back, the center half back, the centerman, the ruckman, and the two key forwards. Now, there is a school of thought that suggests like you don't put the, the midfielder in the spine, but my personal belief has always been that the spine does include at least the best midfielder. Then in a couple places I googled it and that, that is what a spine means. So just to clarify, we're going to talk about each team's best two defenders and genuine key defenders at that. We're going to talk about their number one ruckman, their midfielder, and their two best key forwards. That group is how I'm going to rank the teams. Another clarification I'll make before I get into the video is that we're going to be talking about best 22. So the players that are missing with ACLs, two that come to mind, Griffin Logue, James Blank, they will come back into being available in this video, as well as Carlton's Jake Weedering, who's got a calf that might see him miss a bit of footy. Tom Lynch might miss the start of the season. Now, nah, we're just looking at best case scenario and what their ideal mix is. So I'm going to start in typical fashion with the bottom two teams. And this was also the bottom two teams on last year's ladder in North Melbourne and West Coast. I do have West Coast slightly edging North, but it's pretty damn close. So I will clarify why. So you got the two best key forwards of Allen and Larky respectively. Now I personally think these guys are pretty close in talent. Larky did keep more goals. So I'm happy to concede that Larky maybe wins that by a shade. I've got North's next best key forward as Combin. Now I realize this isn't necessarily how it's going to shape up when the season starts in 2024, but Combin is primarily a forward if I'm not mistaken. So I'm, I'm thinking Griffin Logue is back into this team with Aiden Core down back, and therefore Combin would resume his spot in the forward line. Because in the alternate scenario, I'd have Logue back in, and if I didn't include Combin, he would just be eliminated entirely. So that's my justification. So when you look at the pairing of Allen and Darling versus Larky and Combin, Jack Darling is certainly out of form and didn't have a great year last year, but he probably still shades a very unproven Combin. Now, I like Combin. I've seen some tape of him, and I've seen him playing down back in particular. But you'd have to give the points to Jack Dowling there. So forward lines are fairly even. The ruck situation, Tristan Cherry versus Matthew Flynn. Neither of these are great ruckmen. I feel like Flynn probably has a few more points on the board than Cherry. But even still, if you call that a nil all draw, then you're comparing the best midfielder each team. That's LDU and Kelly. And I do think LDU has Kelly covered in this respect. I think Kelly's a good player, but LDU I'm a big fan of. So North Melbourne probably edge West Coast in everything I've talked about, but by the barest of margins. But the back line is really where I think West Coast probably has North Melbourne covered, and that's McGovern and Barras. I, I, of course, this is ideal. Best case scenario, both of these guys are fit at the same time. What are the odds of that? Versus Aiden Core and Griffin Logue, this is where I think West Coast get the edge. And so front to back, on balance, I think West Coast is a little bit balanced, but they don't have the same star power as North Melbourne. So that's my justification. I think West Coast is slightly more balanced and therefore a little bit higher. The next weakest spine in a league, in my opinion, is Sydney. Now, this seems harsh, but their key forwards are Logan McDonald and you could maybe say Hayden McLean or Joel Amati, but either way, both of these, neither of these are proven goal kickers yet, and I, I think McDonald could be a star of the comp, but we are assessing it on what they're doing right now. And prior to the 2024 season, it's not a super compelling one two punch, although I do think it is a good mix long term. Brody Grundy comes in as a bit of an unknown, but we expect he'd improve the team, so he's a decent ruckman, and I will include Golden in this team as a genuine superstar. But then you get to the back line, and it's Tom McCartan and Joel Hamling. So it's not horrendous by any stretch, but as you move up, you'll see like every team's best case scenario spine is still good to some extent. So I've had Sydney's as the next weakest, but we'll now talk about Hawthorne. And this one is a tricky one to assess. It's a bit of a mixed bag. So you got Mitch Lewis up forward, who looks as talented as guys like Larky and Allen, but hasn't quite delivered on that because of his body yet. And I probably put Gunston as the second key forward, even though you could make the case that he's not a true key forward. It depends how you want to split it. But th that was the pairing I went with, but still a very good and an above average one-two punch. Their weakness is, you know, Ned Reeves in the ruck, you know, no disrespect, but when you rank all the ruckmen in the league, Ned Reeves doesn't really feature too highly. And their best midfielder in Jai Newcomb is a good player on an upward trajectory, but he's still only about that all Australian squad quality. So you think his best is ahead of him, but it doesn't really compare to some of the best midfielders in the game. And they've kind of got an even midfield. Down back, James Sicily is a bona fide superstar. And then James Blank is probably the next best option. So it's just a little bit lopsided. And in some cases, players still have their best ahead of them. So that's why Hawthorne doesn't rank so highly. Now we've got Richmond. Now their best case scenario spine is actually decent. You know, Tom Lynch, best case scenario is still a genuine star. 
The second forward, you know, I'm not really sure if it's going to be Bolter or is it Kaczynski at this point. Either way, I've sort of analyzed it as Kaczynski forward and Bolter back. So Kaczynski as a, as a second key forward, obviously, is still pretty unproven. Nankervis and Taranto, as far as their ruck and midfield goes, that's pretty above average, you'd say. And then I went with the back line of Bolter and Grimes, bearing in mind, I, I do think it's conceivable that Grimes loses his spot to someone like Gibka. So Richmond are in a bit of a team of transition right now, and it's hard to plot, but it's not a bad spine by any stretch. Then I've got the reigning premiers, Collingwood. And it's funny, you know, the, the bunch of ranking videos I've done, Collingwood haven't ranked highly in, in some cases. And once again, they don't rank highly when it comes to spine. And this is with Dan McStay in the team. So you go with a one-two punch of McStay and Majacek. I love Majacek, but, you know, comparatively against other key forwards, I know he's kind of more like a hybrid, but output, like 45 goals a season is very good and he's a star. Like, I really like him. You still compare on output and it's still not amazing and he's he's still better than Dan McStay. The number one ruckman is Darcy Cameron. Again, ranks pretty lowly and I do know that he gets support from Mason Cox. So that, that's where it gets a little bit messy with this. But on the other hand, they do have two bona fide stars in Nick Dacos as their best midfielder, in my opinion. Again, messy because he plays a little bit behind the ball too. And Darcy Moore is one of the best key backs in the league. Nathan Murphy, bit of an understated key back behind that mix. But again, we're talking about a lopsided spine here and I am partly rating on balance too. Then we've got Essendon, and they have added two players to this spine this offseason, and I think it actually shapes up okay. So Peter Wright and Kyle Langford are both capable of kicking 50 goals in a season, which is pretty good. You know, it's decent. It's not, not outstanding, obviously. Todd Goldstein, even at the age of 36, is a decent number one ruck for them. It might only be for a year, but if you include him in this analysis, which you should, you know, he's, he's still a decent ruckman comparatively on output, and then their best midfielder is Zach Merritt, who is a genuine gun. The back line is a little bit unconvincing here. Now, I with the key backs, I've generally failed favored genuine key backs rather than, you know, your third tall hybrid type. So guys like Tom Stewart, and in this case, Jordan Ridley, I didn't put as genuine key backs. So if we look at it as Zach Reed, Ben Mackay, and then maybe Ridley as the third tall, I think that's their ideal setup, then it doesn't stack up so well. Ben Mackay's decent, but as a one-two punch, they've still got a bit to prove, that's for sure. Then we've got Geelong. Now their forward line is, is fantastic with Cameron and Hawkins, albeit Hawkins is 36 or something this year. Uh, so no concerns there. Their Ruck and Reece Stanley is genuinely a weakness comparison and Cam Guthrie as their best midfielder is also, you know, he's a good player. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but when you compare it to the best midfielder at other teams, he doesn't feature that highly. And the two backs, you know, there's De Koning, And if we remove Stewart from this, because I thought he was a bit more of a hybrid, then is it Jack Henry? They kind of roll with a bit of like a dynamic hybrid sort of key back situation with De Koning And, you know, Jack Henry gets named at center half back. So that's the combo I've gone with. It's decent. But compared to other spines, this is pretty much where I had Geelong. Now I've gone with Adelaide next best, okay? With the one-two punch up forward of Tex Walker and Riley Philthorpe. Now Philthorpe is going to be a good player in my opinion as a forward ruck. But at the moment, you know, he's good for about a goal a game and Tex will be predominantly kicking the goals. So on the one hand, I, I can't forecast Philthorpe to be much improved this year, nor can I forecast that Tex Walker will decline. So we'll say that Walker is a star and Philthorpe is sort of on the cusp, you would say, of becoming a good AFL ruck forward. The ruck and midfield combo is good. Riley O'Brien is a well above average uh, ruckman. He's, he's a pretty damn good one at that. And Jordan Dawson is an A-grade midfielder. And then it comes back to their back line. Nick Murray, I will include in this analysis. And then the other key back is probably Jordan Butts. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, uh, the way I see it is Josh Worrell is kind of more the third tall defender. And we're genuinely going for more the key position plays here, which is why I've gone for Butts and not Worrell. And this is where I do think Adelaide are a little bit weak, but it's still, you know, a pretty good spine generally. I've gone for the Western Bulldogs next, and I'm pretty you know, bullish about their forward line in Norton and Jamara Yugo Hagen. So those are the main two key forwards for them. And then you've got a combo in the midfield of Tim English and Marcus Bontempelli, which clearly the best combination of ruck and midfielder in this entire analysis. You know, both of them all Australian. Their back line is a little bit of a question mark. There's, a, there's an aging Liam Jones in there. And I went for James O'Donnell, who I kind of regret not putting in my 22 under 22 amongst a couple of other players. But Jones and O'Donnell, like again, we're comparing it against the rest of the competition. And as a key back combo, on paper, it doesn't rank that highly. So they're about middle tier, the Bulldogs. Then we've got the Fremantle Dockers, who I think are actually assembling a pretty decent spine, it has to be said. So the, the key forward combo is Jai Amos 
and Josh Tracy. And this is raw. I think Jai Amos is on a great trajectory to being a star and already kicking a fair amount of goals. 41 last year is very good, but they don't get a heap out of Josh Tracy yet compared to the other key forwards in this analysis. But where their real strength is, Sean Darcy is a great ruckman in my opinion, and Caleb Strong is an All-Australian midfielder. So that's where Fremantle sort of make up some ground. And I do think their back line, or at least their key backs, are probably a little bit underrated. Alex Pierce is their captain, you know, good, solid, reliable player, and Brendan Cox is a very good one at that. So I think there is genuine evenness here. The key forward's probably the relative weakness there, with Amos only having played two years under his belt, and Josh Tracy still obviously hasn't quite arrived as a footballer. But everything behind that is rock solid. Then I've got Carlton, and I didn't expect to have Carlton this low. But again, I'm comparing as much about top-end quality as I am about evenness in spines. And theirs is not horrendous, but there are still some gaps. So Charlie Kerno is outstanding, obviously. But we consider the form of Harry Mackay, and you know he still really does have some form issues. I won't labour on that, but he really does detract from what could be an amazing one-two punch. Down back, Jacob Wiedering is a star key back, and then their next best, maybe Lewis Young. It's not even necessarily clear. I mean, there's Caleb Marchbank in that team. I didn't go for McGovern. He's not a true key back, so Lewis Young probably is the other one. So again, we've got star power, and then we've got a bit of a question mark either way, and their best ruck is Mark Pitney, who again doesn't rank that highly on output as a ruckman, and their best midfielder is Sam Walsh, who again, I think will take the next step this year, but on exposed form right now, he's a star, but not enough on his own to really lift Carlton up these rankings. So again, it's just a little bit lopsided side from Carlton, but with the potential of some of these guys, you'd think they should shoot up the rankings. Then we've got the power, and I think this one has a bit of uh, star power in it, but it's also quite even, which is why it ranks fairly highly. So Todd Marshall and probably Charlie Dixon are the two key forwards I would consider there. Whether Ollie Lord takes one of their spots, more likely Charlie Dixon, you'd think. But it, it's pretty solid. Ivan Soldo as well, I do rate as a ruckman, and I'm optimistic about what he could provide as a number one ruck at Port Adelaide. And then their best midfielder is Zach Butters. And then down back, you've got Alir Alir, and then whichever one you want out of Asava and Brandon Zerk Thatcher. I went with Asava here, who is decent. So there's no real positional weaknesses here without any line being outstanding, other than, of course, Zach Butters. Then we got the Gold Coast Suns. These guys featured quite highly for me. I really like Ben King and Jack Lacocious. Then in the midfield, they're rock solid too. Jared Witts is one of the best tap ruckmen in the game. In fact, the most prolific ruckman in terms of hitouts per game last year. And their best midfielder is Tork Miller. And then some key defenders, which are a bit understated. I went with Charlie Ballard, who is a gun and Sam Collins, who is a pretty solid role player. And of course that could change. Mac Andrew might take that spot as the second key back by the end of the year. But at the moment you go Ballard and Collins. And I think front to back, it's talented and it's even, and there's no real deficiency there. Maybe Sam Collins is the weak link out of raw talent, but he's still a pretty decent player. Then we got the Saints, and I really do like their spine. So the, the two forwards would be King and Membry. And again, we are relying a little bit on, you know, potential of King. And that's also true of, of Ben King. But 28 goals from 11 games last year, like he is, when he's playing, he's still pretty prolific and very talented. But that's not even the strength of this team. So Rowan Marshall is a very good ruckman as well. And around the ground accumulates a little bit like a midfielder. He gets his 20 touches, his five tackles. So very good ruckman, supported by Jack Steele, who probably hasn't delivered his best form in the last few years. But I think that's partly due to injury and missing pre-seasons. But down back as well, Cal Wilkie, the All-Australian fullback, absolutely rock solid. And Josh Battle as well, probably a little bit of an underrated player. So it's not the best spine in the league, but it's pretty damn good, I reckon. Then we have GWS, who have got an okay forward line in terms of Hogan and Riccardi. In fact, they, they started to play some good footy at the end of last year, particularly Hogan. It's not their strength, but it's decent. Kieran Briggs has become a pretty good ruckman, and then their best midfielder is probably Tom Green. But it's their key backs that is their absolute strength in Sam Taylor, one of the best to do it in the game right now. And Jack Buckley, I mean, maybe there's a bit of recency bias here, but the form I saw from Jack Buckley last year makes me think this is probably the best two key back combo in the competition right now. And I think with the progress of their key forwards last year, GWS have a fantastic spine. Then we've gone for the Ds, another team whose probable weakness is their key forwards. But Van Royen and Harrison Petty, it's a little bit hard to assess. Van Royen's what, played two or three seasons at AFL level now and looks bloody talented, if, if you ask me. And Harrison Petty has shown some flashes up forward, but again, a little bit tough to assess. So that's probably the weakness. But then you go to the midfield and it's Max Gorn and Christian Petrarca as their ruckman and their sentiment. Absolute A-plus quality players, in my opinion. And then May and Lever down back. This is where Melbourne sort of catch up and probably have the second best spine in the competition. And then the team that I think has the best spine in the competition has both top-end quality, and it is also even front to back. So I'm talking about the Brisbane Lions with Joe Danaher and Eric Hipwood. Now, 
Hipwood and Danaher combined for like over 100 goals last year without either of them being stars. They are productive. They put goals on the board. So comparatively, it, it stacks up. Oscar McInerney is a very above average ruckman, you'd say. Gets a stack of hit outs, wins his clearances. He's a good ruckman. And then you get to the stars in Lockie Neal in the midfield and then Harris Andrews down back. So that is supported by Jack Payne. And therefore, given that they have two bona fide stars in Lockie Neal and Harris Andrews, and they've got depth and it's even front to back, this is my logic for Brisbane having the best spine in the AFL. But there you go, guys. Can't wait for you to tear me a new one about this analysis. I've, I've put some thought into this. You know, sometimes you do this analysis, you walk away, you come back and you look at it and you make some changes and that's happened prior to this video so let me know anything that doesn't look right to you and let me know in the comments what you think but otherwise i appreciate you watching and i'll see you in the next video cheers